And a chain. That's a steel chain. Unbeknownst to the official and to Neil Dashwood, Bravo just threw a steel chain. Ty has wrapped it around her fist. We know what's coming now. Look at the, look at the, look at the eyes of the champion. She's wildly. School girl. There we go. She's down. New champion. A kick out. A kick out. A kick out of two. The chain now. In the hand of a yeah. challenger. Go ahead. Use it. But use it. She may risk disqualification. Who cares? Knock her out. There goes the chain. What's up and welcome in. This is Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday with me, Jonathan Hood. Don't forget to follow along on Instagram and Twitter at WrestlingTWT. And also on YouTube, youtube youtube.com. Look for Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday. Well, our special guest that we're going to have on the line in just a moment is the longest reigning Impact Knockouts champion. It is Taya Valkyrie. She's going to be with me to talk about... What happened in Chicago with Impact Wrestling Bound for Glory, the big pay-per-view for Impact Wrestling taking place at the Odium and Villa Park right outside of Chicago. We'll also talk about Access TV. Of course, Tuesday nights now you can find Impact Wrestling on Access TV and Twitch. Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central Time. So we ask you guys to watch Impact Wrestling. I'll be watching as well as it's once again a renaissance for Impact Wrestling as they have their own night, Tuesday nights, on Access TV for Impact Wrestling. Here's my conversation now with Taya Valkyrie, the Impact Knockouts champion right here on Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday. Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday with Jonathan Hood right here on ESPN Chicago and also the Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday podcast. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, coming up uh, this this past Sunday was just a terrific, a terrific pay-per-view. I was in attendance to see Bound for Glory, the biggest pay-per-view for Impact Wrestling. We have the longest reigning Impact Knockouts champion, the great Taya Valkyrie joins us here on Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday with Jonathan Hood. As always, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on the show. I mean, I was really busy planning my birthday party, but I'll make a few minutes for you guys now. <laughs> so thank you. Thank well, you for having me. Well, up front, happy birthday. What, 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 a spe- what a special day. Thank you. Of course it is, you know. <laughs> what a loca was born on this day a million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is so true. Well, mm-hmm. first I want to congratulate you on the victory against Tennille Dashwood. I know that you all have worked together before. What would you think of the match? Um, Hold on one second. For some reason... I- my phone's going weird there for a sec um i thought it was great i thought it was it really pushed both of us since it's been years since we faced each other I, like some people know my first professional match was uh against neil many moons ago um in a past life in calgary Alberta, <laughs> canada right um uh, and then it was like years i mean we both went our separate ways and, and followed our and chose our career paths in very different ways um and then we actually wrestled against each other. I guess it would have been maybe like two years ago at bar wrestling. Right. Um, right during the time I was shooting season four of Luch Underground. And then again, this was the last, and then this last time this past Sunday. So I think we really uh, challenged each other in different ways. Um, it was just like really interesting and cool to, to be facing someone like that, that we've literally 
being with against each other in all these different stages of our careers um and this was just another another um you know way of showing why i'm the longest reigning knockouts champion and i came out victorious once again absolutely it was a terrific matchup and i'll tell you being from chicago and watching live the crowd was hot for impact wrestling it had been what did d-lo brown tell me like seven years six seven years since impact came to Chicago, and that was at the Sears Center, as a matter of fact, in Hoffman Estates. But I just think that the, it was a, a really hot crowd. What did you think of the show overall for Bound for Glory? I mean, Bound for Glory has always been one, you know, the biggest show of the year. I feel like every pay-per-view we've actually just kept keep out doing ourselves, so it just becomes harder and harder. But we kept, do, you know, we did it once again. I feel like we just were closing out this uh, last pay-per-view on a super high note, especially coming into this new Access TV deal. Um I think it was amazing from start to finish, and there's so much variety, so many different types of matches, you know, and um, everybody was showcased in a different way. I mean, there are tons of women on the show, which is great to see, as well as all different kinds of wrestling. And so I'm very proud of what the entire roster and everyone behind the scenes did for this year's BFG. And you know we're just going to continue on um, into 2020 on this high note and really pushing ourselves even more. Taya, historically, the knockouts division has been the strong Longest division of any women's locker room across the United States. And, well, and, obviously. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. <laughs> well, you being the champion, of course. Yeah, but, of course. But, but nonetheless, though, I just I just think that, um, that once again, no surprise that Knockouts Division continues to sp- stay on top. What stands out most about that locker room that you're in? What's the best part about it? Yeah, or, what, what, yeah. Stand, what stands out about it? Oh, stands out. Sorry, I just didn't hear you there. Um, what stands out about us is I feel like we none of us are being put in a box. We're all allowed to express ourselves and express our characters and our style of of wrestling in our own way. And the, our the writers and everyone behind the scenes really wants to see us flourish individually and not kind of you know restrict us as to like what we have to look like or how we have to wrestle or how we should speak or or the directions our characters should go in. So everybody is allowed to shine in their own way. And for me specifically, obviously, I I can tell that being allowed this creative freedom has really helped me and allowed me to grow into, you know, the, the Taya that you guys have seen has even from last year at this time completely evolved. And I pride myself on continually evolving and improving and, and um, bringing something new every single time for everyone to see. And, uh, you know, I think that's what sets us apart. And I mean, I remember watching when I was, you know, when I was growing up and I was always a fan of wrestling and I always wanted to be a knockout, you know, like the knockouts were always, on top of their game they were always being given opportunities that other girl women in other you know companies were not um so i'm i pride myself on continuing that legacy and really representing you know to the best of my abilities what the knockouts represent which is a strong independent creative outgoing woman who has strengths in all departments and can really bring it in the ring outside the ring and it's a positive representation of a female athlete um in today's entertainment world yeah what are your overall thoughts on women's wrestling right now in 20 uh, 2019 i mean across the board there is uh, a want and a need to see it what are your thoughts on it i mean it's ex- a dream come true because we've all been fighting forever (laughs) since even before I wrestled, you know, it's been going on for years and years and years for women to be recognized in the way that they are right now. And I mean, that all, that goes for professional wrestling, but it also goes for every sport, every aspect of entertainment in general. Um, so it's great to see. And I feel like everyone in every single different company is, is killing it. Um, and I think that we're all at this level now that we're, you know, we're all pushing each other, even from other, you know, federations and other groups of women to to just keep continuing to outshine and outdo each other. So it's a friendly competition, I believe, yeah. <laughs> um, between all of us. And uh, I mean, that's what's great about it. You know, it's it just keeps moving forward. Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday with Taya Valkyrie, the longest reigning Impact Knockouts champion on her birthday. We're bothering her right here on Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday <laughs> with Jonathan Hood. Taya, uh, you know, a lot of us will not be able to experience what it's like to be in Mexico to watch AAA, to be able to watch uh, wrestling in Mexico. For those that have not seen it or not experienced it, what's that culture like for you? Oh, I mean, I could write a book about, <laughs> about that. Um, obviously, like, I mean, I lived there for so long, so I feel like I have a different, and I in the thick of it in Mexico City, and then, you know, right in it and traveling on the road with AAA for, you know, five and a half years. I've experienced it on a level that I feel like nobody else 
other than those who, you know, are native to it have experienced. Um, I mean, wrestling in Mexico is part of their culture. Uh, Lucha Libre is like a, the second sport to soccer in popularity. So that is huge when you think about the popularity of football, soccer, um, in Mexico as a whole. Um, so, I mean, the fans take it on a whole other level. They become part of the show. They're not just spectators. They are screaming and yelling, and they take everything so seriously and personally and emotionally. And the, the emotions and the you know adrenaline that you feel wrestling in front of those crowds is not like anywhere else in the world. And I've wrestled in front of people in Canada, in the States, in Mexico, in Japan, in Chile, um, in Colombia. Like, I'm going to wrestle in England this year. I mean, I just feel like Mexico is in a class all of its own fan-wise. Uh, so, I mean, I'm excited for people to get to see what people have been doing there for, you know, so many years. There are so many talented people that come out of Mexico and are still yet to be discovered by the, you know, greater public. And so I'm very excited for those people to be able to be seen finally. And the fans too, right? The fans just is completely different than what we're used to, right? Yes, they're they're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in the best way, I don't know. They make you, they make me excited. Like I, I don't know if you guys noticed at the pay per view that there's a whole section of lucha libre fans that yes. had drums and stuff. Like that's what I'm talking about, and that doesn't like that's not like an, an abnormal thing. That's everywhere. I can remember like Arena Nesta in. Mexico City where like the half of the arena had drums and flags and they're like are like throwing back chants from one side of the arena to the other it's nuts <laughs> so if you ever have the chance to experience a real lucha libre crowd and actually go to a lucha libre show in Mexico City I highly recommend it because it will uh it'll change your life <laughs> that's really awesome I, I enjoy or, take, or it'll change your life or take years off your life it's just like <laughs> one or the other man it's, it's really cool to watch i want to be able to experience that at least once that's for sure can you yeah. uh, i want you to put on your executive hat just for a second um mm -hmm. not your worker hat but your your executive hat because this is great for wrestling fans that XS TV, Impact Wrestling has its own night every Tuesday. It's Destination TV now because it's 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central on XS TV for, for Impact Wrestling. I mean, what's that, what's your thoughts on the direction of Impact? When you have your own night, Scott Demore and Don Callis, there's not one negative thing on, on social media about either one of those guys. Either one of well, these I mean, guys. I think, I think it should be called Tie It Tuesday, but um, <laughs> okay. we'll get to that. <laughs> I'm starting to hashtag right now. <laughs> hashtag Tie It Tuesday. <laughs> I love that. What do you What do you think of the direction of the company now that you have your own night on Tuesdays? Um, well, I mean, I'm now coming to two years officially with the company pretty much. Um, I, th I think it's amazing, and I think that it's something we've all wanted for a very long time, and I think that – you know, when Anthem took over and when Scott and Don and Ed and everyone came into the picture, it was just like such an uncertain time in Impact Wrestling. And I feel like especially over the last 12 months to two years, everything has just continually gotten better. And everyone on our roster put on a really good show for everybody. And now the fact that it's always been kind of an issue that people were having trouble watching it and it's more motivating for us behind the scenes as well as in front of the camera to just be that much better and to push ourselves. And I think that the creative and direction of the company as well as the, from a business point of view, like you said, you know, business Taya um, would say that, <laughs> <laughs> that it's, it's, it's only positive. Only positive things can come from this. And um, I'm just very excited to like see more of the evolution of what's gonna happen behind the scenes as well and have fans that aren't impact or aren't even wrestling fans watch what we're doing because we're doing something very special and i just i pride myself on really trying to venture out to fans and people in general that are not used to seeing pro wrestling or not familiar with it because it's just so incredible and it's an art form that really needs to be seen by everyone um so uh, being there live and of course me being a guy i don't know colors it looked like chicago bears orange or is that more like peach you were wearing sunday it's really funny because i did not even <laughs> not planned at all i mean my seamstress i have several seamstresses that work on my stuff i think i'm absolutely out of my mind because of the things i come up with <laughs> and i literally send pictures of like ice cream and like weird things to her and i was like i want to look like this it had absolutely no correlation to like 
the Chicago Bears at all. But when I saw the tweets about it, I was like, oh my god! <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just psychic or something. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was it was orange. It was very bright. It was like three different kinds of of orange. There was like a neon, a velvet, and then like a sparkly orange. And then I mean, Johnny Bravo. Let me tell you, I had nothing to do with that outfit because that was on a whole other level. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, like you you usually get a pop anyway when people see you because it's the spectacle of Taya Valkyrie. But then you come down the ramp with that orange, right? Especially right after the Bears game, and the fans are just like roaring, like "Oh my God, she's wearing Bears orange!" So that yeah, got the no, fans going. Total, it's un- total fluke. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Road Warrior pop for you, which is ridiculous. It's like, oh my love God. It, love it. I mean, I don't need to wear a like a, a city's color to get that pop. Hello, I went with a low pop. <laughs> I know, it was so funny. People were pointing because I'm back there with you know the media and I can hear the fans like, oh my God, she's a Bears fan. Look at that, Road Warrior. Look at that, she's got it like Bears orange. Like it was so awesome. It was really funny. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally planned. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> you had it planned, sure. Uh, um, hold on. <laughs> so uh, Impact Wrestling is going to be at St. Clair College in Windsor, Ontario, on the 25th and 26th. Couple of tapings then, right? In, in yeah. next week, yeah. Could be back yeah. in Canada for you. Yeah, I just wish that we would go over to the West Coast. That's the best coast. That's where I'm from. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's always nice to be in front of Canadian fans. Um, you know, there is such a huge following of, of professional wrestling in my country. So, I mean, it's always great to be out there in front of the fans in Windsor, Ontario, because, you know, I'm the longest reigning NACA's champion of all time, and a Canadian being the longest reigning NACA's champion of all time obviously affects their life in a positive way. So <laughs> I'm going to be returning there with my championship uh um, this week, so I'll see them all. <laughs> you can go to impactwrestling.com for tickets. St. Clair College in Windsor, Ontario on the 25th and 26th of October. TV tapings there. Um, Taya, lastly, and I appreciate your time here on the show in Chicago, What is there something that you want to accomplish in your life that you would love to do but you haven't done yet? Well, that's like a huge question. Hello? Does it have to do with wrestling or does it, could it be like anything? Yes. Yes, to which part? Yes, 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 yes. either one. Oh, I mean, I think if I had to pick something that I was outside of wrestling, I think it would be to have my own clothing line Mm -hmm. and and to design really ridiculous clothing that makes people feel amazing and completely over the top so basically everything that's in Ty's closet um and then <laughs> right. as far as like in wrestling i think i just want to keep challenging people's thoughts about what pro wrestling is i mean i just i just want to keep growing as a performer i don't know why i want to keep being pushed in a way that makes me grow personally and professionally and I want to be given bigger and bigger stages to do it on and I want to travel into other countries where I haven't been and perform you know and I want to see my husband and I grow to be the best pro wrestlers that the world has ever seen you know yes. I just want, I, it's so hard to like pinpoint one specific thing I just want to be as successful as possible I have my entire life is just always strive to be the best and I know it's pretty corny but um I'm always challenging myself and I think that people get comfortable a lot of the time, but I love and thrive on being uncomfortable. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's just keep pushing the envelope and keep getting, making things bigger and keep, you know, making matches, creating matches and creating magic for fans worldwide in a way that they've never seen before, you know, and really pushing what people think is pro wrestling and breaking stereotypes and seeing women be paid equally and like you know all there's a million things um but yeah i think that that would generate i hope that that answered your question yeah absolutely (laughs) just wondering just wondering what's going through your mind so so you and morrison pretty much like the power couple of wrestling like you guys bigger than jay-z and beyonce right well yeah duh I yeah. mean, look at us. We have more abs <laughs> than, than they have records. <laughs> that's, that's true, actually. <laughs> I believe that is true. Well, Taya, I, I am uh, so looking forward to Access TV now. Destination night every Tuesday night, uh, Taya Tuesdays, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. Uh, happy birthday to you. I hope that, and I wonder, I can just imagine what your birthday's like. I mean, I mean we celebrated it last week. So everyone should just check my Instagram. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we will check it, that's for sure. Hey, Taya, thanks, yeah. so, thanks so much for coming on with us in Chicago and continue success. Thank you so much, and hopefully we'll be back there real soon. Wow, great conversation with Taya Valkyrie, the longest reigning impact knockouts champion in history of that company, the great Taya Valkyrie, on her birthday, joining us right here on Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday. All right, our next episode, you will be able to hear my thoughts about Bound for Glory. I'll also get into a little bit what's going on with New Japan Pro Wrestling. New Japan is going to have more dates in the United States. We'll talk about it. Also, Jake Hager with some powerful thoughts about the WWE, Monday Night Raw, everything else around professional wrestling. We'll get to that on our next edition of Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday right here. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Wrestling TWT. Also on YouTube, youtube.com. Look for Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday. Hit that subscribe button. And I always forget to say this because I assume you guys are going to do this for me anyway. But on iTunes, on Apple Podcast. Go to Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday. If you're listening to us, not on Spotify or not on SoundCloud or not on Stitcher. If you're listening to me on Apple Podcast, please give me five stars. Please give me a review of the podcast. Tell us what we can do better. What do you like? What do you dislike about the podcast? We're just trying to make this a lot better for you, the wrestling fan. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you truly enjoyed my conversation with the champ, Taya Valkyrie, right here on Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday.